So I am a Siri route out here in California, San Diego, and I run a team out here. Um, and we are very heavy in our systems, our processes. And one of the big things that we have worked on heavily over the last uh, couple of years, Jen's now been with me for four years, is our CRM and how we use our CRM. And so I have my special guest here, Jen Wen, who's uh, gonna be going over some of our CRM backend and just showing what we do here. Um, so Beth, over to you. Um, I'm Beth. I run a, a, a large team in Minnesota and um, I am like Siri. One of the things that we have in common and that brought us together is our use of systems in process and continual tinkering and engineering and making it better and switching it up. And like this works, it doesn't work. Like what do we need to do as everything evolves? So uh, I'm excited. I think even at Rise, we get to you're doing uh even more robust panel on systems right siri yeah are you in my panel yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we haven't even talked about it but yeah I I know. Know that that's going to be even more on this but today again i'm just going to share a little bit too just some real basics from a kind of a coach perspective of um just you know setting up a crm and just some best practice and some tips that i'm gonna just you know jen's Jen's the main dish today, and I'm just gonna add a little, little, little sprinkle something at the end. <laughs> <laughs> a little sprinkle. Jen has it till to be the main dish. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, let's um, let's head on over to the next slide here. So as we talked about, our recipe for today is technology and tools for efficiency, um, client relationship using your CRM. Our agenda is finding the CRM that you believe in. Oh, we can go back. That's fine. Um, finding, so these, this is kind of a breakdown of what we're going to go over today. So finding a CRM that you believe in, obviously there's many out there. Um, Beth and I both use the same CRM, which is follow up boss. So that's going to be our heavy focus today, but really it's whatever you use and you believe in and you feel good about. And I'll say we did use a different CRM before. I'm sure you have too. And we just have found that this works really well for us. And so we're, we're going and diving deep, deeper and deeper into that system. Um, how do you set up your CRM for efficiency? Um, and then we're going to go into one of our side dishes, which is a company called Interface. And so I'm not sure if you've heard of them or not, but we'll show you a little bit of what that does for us. Um, and then the dessert will be culture results of an effective CRM, culture and results of an effective CRM. So that's the breakdown for today um, for what we're going to be going over. So finding a CRM that you believe in. So um, you know, what we're going to talk about is, again, you're, when you're building a team, you're not always going to get it right the first time. And that's okay, right? And I can tell you that the CRM that we had before, which I'm not going to throw, and I'm not saying I'm throwing this one under the bus because it's actually one that, that our brokerage really uses heavily, which is was, was Chime is now Lofty. Um, I was all in, total believer. I still think it's a great CRM it just became a little harder for us to navigate as a team. And it also at the time, and I'm sure they've improved things, weren't speaking to other programs as much as follow-up bus was. So our journey started there. Um, I gave all my efforts, I studied it heavily, and this was pre-gen. And I just did the best I could with that. And then all of a sudden I realized, you know what, we need to find something that's a little more efficient for our team. And so we started searching for other CRMs, but um, you need to make sure that does the CRM offer customization options? Like I said, does it allow us to be able to speak to other programs, to move it around, change it like we need it for ours? Because every team's gonna function differently. Um, does it offer capabilities specific to real estate? Because there are CRMs out there um, that aren't just for real estate, right? And so, I mean, there's some great CRM. Salesforce is one of them. Um, I know HubSpot's one of them. Sierra, there's some other HubSpot. CRMs. That, mm -hmm. Which one is it? HubSpot? Oh, Sierra yeah. HubSpot. Yep. Yep. 
Um, and so, you know, does it specifically focus on real estate? Personally, I think it should. I would right. just add in that I've been in a couple speaking things recently, and um, it's amazing how many of our counterparts who are in those systems are moving away from it into follow up boss because of just the real estate, exactly what you said, Siri, the capabilities that this um, this one allows. So I think that's really important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Features, does the CRM offer features like contact lead management, automation, workflow management, transaction management, marketing tools, and more? You need to take a look at those. Now, I will say in Follow Up Us, again, this is just our, what we know best and what we're going to focus on. There's definitely some features in there that we don't have. There's some things that I would like changed, right? Um, but for the most part, we took a look at what is the bulk of what we're doing and does it have it? And it checked most of it off. Um, is the software available for multiple platforms? Can it be used on the go? Can it be used uh, mobile, right? Big, big deal with our agents is to make sure that they're looking at it on mobile, which most of them are typically on mobile. They're not necessarily going to be sitting on the computer. Um, and th does it offer support? So we have, I mean, Jen can speak on this because I'm not as involved with it, but does it offer the support that you need? And is it rely, rely, reliable, right? So sometimes I will say systems go down and sometimes follow-up bus does go down, but they do have a, a way for us to see when it goes down, what does that mean? And so we, we need to make sure that it's reliable on there. So that was our, our journey um, into where we are now. And we've been with follow-up bus now for a couple of years and um, Internet connection's bad. Um, why did we why did we choose it? So and why we chose it. So Beth, I don't know if you have anything to add, you know, as your journey to get here. Obviously, also we're a Zillow Flex team. And so that was another, you know, big plus for us was to be able be able to connect our Zillow with Follow Boss. I will say that though we became Follow Boss before we really got in deep with Zillow. So I think that just like you, I mean, maybe you were already we were prior. I would say, yeah. okay, so I wasn't. So I, uh, one of the things I think Siri and I are both very passionate about is, um, you know, just doing a lot of research and trying mm -hmm. to make to the best of our ability, a decision one time and make sure that we are looking at it from a lot of different angles. And I would say that I came to the same conclusion. I'm not going to repeat what you said, but I have done, you know, all the way back old systems, right? But I mean, even contextually boomtown to like some of the whatnot. And when I knew I needed a serious system, I did HubSpot, I did Salesforce. I mean, first of all, that was a cost at the time was just ridiculous to, to build those out. The customization aspect is really cool. But like you said, not being able to do real estate too much customization, didn't have that much time. So follow up boss really nailed it. Like as far as being an independent company, and I know a lot of people do have some hesitation because of the sale to Zillow, but it really is an independent company and what it can do is amazing. And what I've always loved about it. And even in the beginning is it was something that we definitely could, when I coach team leaders too, is like, you can grow into it, right? It's a single platform system. It's for three T people. And then it's for enterprise level. I mean, they've got different tiers. Switching your CRM is a nightmare, right? As, as a team, you do not want to do this more than hopefully once. <laughs> if you can avoid those, right? That's like the best thing. So I agree with choosing FUB is that it did a lot of research. It was the best one for all the reasons that you stated. And I'm so happy that it is able to grow from a small team up to even 50 agents and still exist in it and have room to continue on and, and have the complexity. Yep. And, and, um, you know, just a thing too, a CRM is like a shell, right? So it's just a, it's a shell that you have that you want to look at all the features and make sure it fits for you. Because like you said, you don't want to change. We luckily just for the team changed once, <laughs> but it was a nightmare for us. We did it, but it was, and I actually had agents who just dug, dug their feet into, they get very used to a certain system. And so to have them have to move is very taxing on agents. Um, and so really just, I, I love that you said, emphasize doing your homework on it and making sure that you really understand which direction you're going in. So 
Um, we changed, uh, I think we did two or three in it in a course of a two year period and about broke some people. And to this day, the people that were in the team during that era have never fully adopted follow up boss, like everybody who came after. So it really is something that when you do your homework, you try to just do one shot and get it, get it right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I, I remember I had one agent that just refused to use it and eventually um, ended up not on the team. And I wouldn't say it's from the CRM, but it was definitely a, a, a meltdown moment of it's it. like your people. <laughs> That's their whole business. So they right. get used to how it works and they got all their contacts in there. And yeah, okay, so. <laughs> um okay did we lose the slides here we go okay so i am excited to hand over um a little bit we can go to the next one Brenna. so i'm excited to hand over a little bit more of the information over to jen Wen, who like i said jen's been on the team for four years jen started with us as an isa then moved into um database and now, what is your official title now, Jen? Because I know we played around with yes, all the different direct, names. Uh, director of Client Care. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, she's, Jen is like, like a catcher of everything. She runs our ISA department. She manages VAs and different portals that we have and making sure things stay updated. She cracks the whip on everybody, including myself. I'm not doing things properly. She keeps the database clean. I'm telling you, like, it's like amazing to have somebody on your team like this. And so again, this is another part of it as you're growing your team. Um, and when you're smaller, you can probably manage a few agents and all the things that they're doing. But when you start to get bigger, and I'm saying even probably five plus, you're going to need to watch what is going on with the leads that you're giving to your agents. And if, especially if you're in production, you're not gonna be able to be watching it as closely as you should be, you know, to make sure that those leads get in the right hands. So um, I'm gonna get it over to you, Jen, and feel free. And the fun thing about today is we're gonna be showing you like some of our, like behind the scenes of things too, which is always exciting. And so you guys can take a look at what we've set up over time. So uh, like we do on Huddle in the morning, over to you, Jen. <laughs> okay, thank you. So um, just getting started on this slide here, um, setting up the CRM for effectiveness and efficiency. I think this is probably one of the key components. And this is something um, I think it was mentioned a little bit earlier about um, you have to keep kind of changing with the times, right? So making sure that you're updating your smart list, updating your tags, your forms, things like that. I feel like um, our follow-up boss is a constant work in progress. Um, and like we said, there's no one way to do it. It's every team is going to do it differently. And one of the great things um, about follow-up boss is that it is so customizable. When you find that something isn't working, you can go in, you can make a tweak to it, and you can update your smart list to make them more relevant to the way your team is functioning now as opposed to how your team was maybe functioning six months ago. So some of the things that we use to customize our CRM are, of course, the use of smart lists. Um, one of the great things about follow-up boss as well is that we can use tags to tag certain leads. And then that allows us to find leads in certain categories based on those tags. For example, we have um, a lot of clients that come into us that would like to request a Spanish speaking agent. So we have a tag for a Spanish speaker so that our agents that speak Spanish can access those clients more easily and be able to help them more efficiently. So all kinds of tags that you can use for, for different things. We have a tag that we use for clients who told us that they were considering moving out of state or that they already have an agent. And then agents can search by that and call them up and say, hey, we, you know, you had told us at one time that you already had an agent. 
We're just following up to see how things are going. Did you ever end up finding a home that meets your needs? So those tags allow us to intelligently follow up with our clients. And I think that is, um, it, from my opinion, the key to follow up is just being able to have intelligent follow up that you know what you're talking about when you call your clients and um, have a good reason for, um, for getting back in touch with them. We use a lot of automation. Um, another and the action plans that follow up boss um, has to offer as well. Um, another thing that we do with that tag for has an agent is we do have a buyer and a seller um, action plan that goes out that will just gently follow up with the client in a couple of weeks and say, hey, you know, when you when I spoke to you last, you told us that you had an agent just following up to see if we can be of any assistance. And that email goes out automatically to the client in a couple of weeks. So those kinds of things are really important for our team to use those text templates, email templates. Um, we love our templates. Um, I spend a lot of time going into chat GPT, uh, creating different templates for texts and emails that our agents can use. Um, one of the other things we talked about is being able to use follow up boss on the fly, um, being able to go into your app and just click use a template and be able to send a template out to a client if you're in a hurry and you just need to get something out to them. So we love that. And then our integrations. Um, there's so many other platforms that integrate with Follow Up Boss, which was, again, one of the, the more important reasons that we like this. And as Siri had stated, we are a Zillow team, um, heavily um, working as Zillow Premier agents. And this allows us to integrate with them and have all of our information seamlessly between the two. Okay, so um, before we go into this, Jen, do you want to maybe pull up and I'd love to give some examples of what we've done in the CRM because I feel like it's good for people to not have to reinvent the wheel. And obviously we've spent a lot of manpower in how mm -hmm. we've set ours up. And so maybe you guys can grab something for yourself that might be useful in that. And then I do want to go over some of the interface. Beth, what do you use? Um, did, did you use interface at one point? No, I'm excited to see no. what this is. Cool. Okay. I'm not able to. Well, as your point, oh wait, what are we doing? Oh, you're not sure showing. Do you need to share permission or what, what is it? Yeah, Jeff? you want me to share my follow-up boss screen, Siri? Yeah, let's show some of it. Um, are we able to give Jen? She does. She has it now. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. All righty. All right. Can everybody see my follow-up boss screen there? Okay. So, um, yeah, a little bit of what you do here. Yeah, so basically, um, from my standpoint and also for the agents as well, um, we have it set up so that their smart lists tell them who to follow up with each day. And my smart lists function the same way for me so that I can go in and I can see who the agents need to follow up with and I can give little nudges to help them with their follow up as well. So these are our smart lists. We have um, five smart lists. And again, at one time, I think we had seven or eight and we kind yeah. of paired those down and simplified a little bit. Um, some of the information felt like it was a little overwhelming and maybe we were spreading things out too far. So we kind of brought it back down to five smart lists. So it's very easy for the agents to just every day be able to just go in and click on smart list one, two, three, four, and five each day and clear those lists. And they clear with a phone call or a text. So um, what they would want to do is each day just follow that um, system and that will help them to not miss people. Um, we have the 
The smart list number two is what we call our 10 day push. So those would be new clients that just came in that we put into attempted contact. Um, they'll call them every day for the first 10 days until they're able to get the client on the phone. Um, at the end of the 10 days, we do have an automation set up. So the client assigns over to me at that point. And then I evaluate the lead on day 11 and decide, should we get an ISA on this? one right away? Should I reach out to the agent? Maybe they didn't make enough contact attempts. Um, is this client very active? Um, you know, clicking on, on homes and looking at homes and maybe they just haven't answered or responded yet? Or do we have bad contact information? And then I make a determination at that point, whether we move the lead into a nurture pond or we continue um, trying to contact the lead. The next one we have would be kind of like their hot leads. So these leads, um, they will pop up on this list every 48 hours. So if the agent makes a call or sends a text, they disappear off the list. 48 hours later, they pop up on this list again to remind the agent to um, get back in touch with them. So our hot clients, we wanna kind of be in constant contact with if we're showing homes or submitting offers, we don't wanna let more than a couple of days pass without um, having contact with them. That was the thought process behind that one. And then our warm leads would be the leads that we're maybe out showing homes. With, um, we've shown them a couple of homes. We haven't really gotten to the point yet where we're submitting offers. We know they're going to purchase a home sometime very soon in the near future. We want to make sure we're in contact with them about every eight days. So we have it set up like that. If they make a phone call, send a text, it disappears off the list, pops up again within the week so that they know to reach out again. And then our nurture leads are every 30 days. And this is where we encourage um, agents to use our ISA team as well on those nurture leads. Um, if you have a, a, a lead that's a little bit further away from purchasing or somebody who has a condition that they can't get a loan because they need to file another tax return or something like that, um, this would be the point where we um, encourage agents to add ISAs um, to their leads so that the ISA can continue that monthly follow up with them and keep an eye on their activity to see if they become active again and reach out to them to find out if something has changed and maybe they're ready sooner than we thought they would be. Um, we also have set up here. Um, these are some active um, smart list that I have set up for the agents. We have active Zillow leads and active other team leads. So they would be from any other portal. So leads would pop up on these lists to let agents know that they're actively clicking on homes, favoriting things, um, and let them know that these clients are active and maybe they should take a look at what they're doing and see if they need to reach out sooner rather than later. And then we, of course, have a list for their SOI leads. And I think that covers it for their smart list. The rest are yeah, kind of I, my list. <laughs> yeah, no, and a couple things just to um, go over there, too. Is so on our team, we, as far as team leads, have a capacity for our agents of 50 leads at a time. And so... Um, Jen manages that and watches that, and we have a VA... We have a couple of VAs in the back that also work to help Jen as well um, that she that she manages to keep an eye on these leads. So the goal is for agents to have a bulk of their leads to be active um, that they're working on without having too many leads. Because when we first started the team, it was a free for all. I had agents with 400 leads. They were just waiting for a hand to be raised. And there's really no way that an agent capacity wise could be managing that many leads effectively. And so, you know, as our team grew, it, I think in, in hindsight, I was just building a team and not thinking about those steps. It was just like, here's take leads, just work the leads. And then you start to get control over what am I actually giving you? Are you converting them? What is your conversion? And you start tracking this down. But our team, we've picked 50. So, I mean, whatever that number is for you, personally, me being back in production at a very high level right now, um, I can hardly even manage more than maybe 25, 30. 
personally. Ours is 35. And so as an example, okay. ours is 35. There yeah. you go. I think you could yeah. earn 50 if you're that person. That's just a different, per there's different agent types, right? Like I always say that, and you learn that Siri, where there are agents on your team that they're methodical, they're lead gen, they, they come in, they can have consistency, they do it every day. Uh, you and I are not those people, right? So like, I don't even think I should have 25 or 35. I should be 25, right? But I think that it's it also is the disc and who's working it yeah. in an ideal world. Correct. But it's easy to, like you said, just do 35, 50 across the board universally. That's even more. I love that you have a number too, right? Whatever the number is that works for your team, your agents, you're not going to know your capacity. The thing is, is if you set a policy and a standard, how do you manage that standard and that policy then, right? And that's where you need to have a team behind you. And this is why things are built. This is why you say you're building a team. You you build around these policies and these standards that you start to set for your team. And so <clears throat> anyways, that's, I just wanted to relay that, you know, that's something that we have set. That is for team leads. I also wanna emphasize that's for team leads. If they have their own SOI, which they should in follow-up boss, we're not we're not managing and tracking those SOIs like that. So just again, those are team leads that they have. Same. So mm -hmm. cool. Yep. Um, all right. What other goodies can we show here, Jen? Um, well, do we want to move into talking about interface? And yeah, maybe let's show one of our clients. <clears throat> um, you can, I don't know if there's any of mine on here, but whatever you want to show, because okay. I'd like to show just once we're in how we set up the lists and our custom fields. Again, everybody's going to do this different. Beth, I'm sure yours looks great and it's different. Um, and one of the things too, that Jen mentioned, like our smart list at one point, I think was like seven or eight and our custom fields were a lot more than this and mm -hmm. and and that was probably me in there <laughs> in fact i know it was going in and just setting all these big things up and then having someone like jen come in and then watching how the agents use it over time we started to just like pull pull back in pull back in um and so and and we also were using a different company for our like we use real scout when I got word that Real Scout was coming out, we had a different company before that. I was like very we're all in and it's been, it literally uh, changed our life overnight to have the, the piece that we had with Real Scout coming in and when they integrated with Follow Up Bus. Um, nobody's paying me to, <laughs> to, to shout out these companies, by the way, but I'm telling you overnight, <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, Jen, it made our life so much easier. So that's where the agents set up their searches and so forth. Um, so I don't know if you want to talk about this a little bit and it'll, it'll take us basically right into interface. I did want to kind of give a promo code for all of these. <laughs> oh, by the way, we will though, I, I will get you, I can get you some um, connections with both interface um, and with Real Scout for sure. <laughs> I Go wanted ahead, to touch on something that you said there, Siri, and I think that was one of the really important things that happened as we were growing and changing and adding all this stuff that we're doing is that listening to the agents and seeing what they're using and what was working and what wasn't working and then going back in and being able to quickly make those changes to make things more functional for the agents to be able to use and to want to use. Correct. Yeah. And I also was, I mean, quote, you say out of production. I wouldn't say I was completely out because I'm still, I was still doing transactions. It just wasn't at the capacity that I am now or that I was before. And so I think another big part of that as a team leader is I started to sell again. And so I, trust me, there's been many meetings, right? Where I was like, no, we need to get rid of that. I would never use that. Like it's driving me crazy if I, you know. So I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Jen, it was helpful when I got back in too at a higher level. And I was like, no, we, this is too much. Yeah. And we started dialing it back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. 
So um, over here is what Siri was talking about earlier. This is our custom fields. And these are just kind of some things that we have built in um, for our agents to use um, links that they can link into things directly from our follow-up boss. So some of it is um, forms that were built for us by Interface, which we'll go into. Some of it is um, Cognito. Did she freeze? Oh, I, you guys were both like not moving. So I was like, did everybody freeze? Oh, I know. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was watching you see her. Like, okay, she's moving. Yeah. Is she going to move? Yeah. Um, I think she did freeze. We'll see if she opens it up here in a minute. Oh, she'll probably bounce back in. What, um, real quick while, while um, Jen's getting back on, what do you guys use for, um, for the input? What company do you use, Beth, for the, there she is. Input. This is where <laughs> yeah, for, for collecting the, you know, appointments and just for, um, you know, understanding the data and the analytics and things like that. Follow-up boss? Okay. Yeah, we don't really, I mean, I think then you're saying like, I'm going to, I'm going to see what you're doing. Yeah. Okay, this is what ahead, you're Jen. saying, like all these back. forms that you're talking about that roll up into reporting, yeah, they, tracking and measuring. They have purpose. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have purpose. Yeah. Cool. All right. Back to you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, so here we have the link um, that links over into our Real Scout, which Siri had mentioned. That was where our agents um, set up their home searches. And you see like all these beautiful pictures that pop right over into follow up boss. So the agent can still go in just one place and see what the client's activity is over in real scout and um, all the messages. If the client were to send a message and say, Hey, Sheree, I'd really like to see this home that pops over into follow up boss as well. So again, really easy to manage, easy to use. Um, we have this handy dandy appointment form. Um, that was created for us by Interface. And I think I can show what one looks like, how it pops into follow-up boss once it's filled out. So when Cherie um, gets off the phone with this client and she has set up an appointment to go and either have a buyer's consultation with them over the phone or meet them on Zoom or meet them at a home, she'll fill out this appointment form. And what she can do through this appointment form is she can gather as much or as little information from the client as she would like to collect. So there are fields in here that aren't required, and then there are some that are required. So if she wants to put in their price points, the neighborhoods they're looking for, um, if they have kids or dogs or when they're wanting to move by, all of that information can be put into this form at her discretion. And then all of that information will go over here into the client's background so that she can later go back and see what she discussed with the client. Um, once she fills out this appointment form, it creates a contact in CSU automatically. So the client will be in CSU. And then once she gets to the point where she's got an offer accepted with this client, then all of the information is there in CSU already for our TCs to be able to use. It also creates um, automatically an appointment up here for her in her follow-up boss, which then goes into her Google Calendar and sends her a reminder for when she's going to meet the client. And it also sends a reminder out to the client um, via text message to remind them of the appointment day and time as well. Anything to add there? Well, the disposition is the fun next part, right? Because yes. wanna, which is right there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no, that's great. <laughs> so once Cherie's appointment time has passed, what will happen is she'll get a text message with a link to this disposition form in it. And it just says, hey, Cherie, tell us how your appointment went 
and the link is in there and she can click it right from the text message and she can let us know what happened with the client. Did she meet them? Did they not show up? Um, is this a likely opportunity, a client that she's going to continue working with and she thinks that they're going to transact in the near future? Is it an unlikely opportunity? Maybe she met them and found out that they were not even close to being able to purchase a home for whatever reason, or maybe met them and found out that they're a long nurture. Maybe they don't even live in the state and they're going to be relocating here months from now. So she can disposition the appointment um, based on however she feels that appointment went and then add information um, from the appointment to again, remind herself later when she comes back in and be able to see what happened in that appointment. So again, intelligent follow-up. She'll remember everything she talked about with this client so that when she calls them again later, she'll be able to follow up with them. And I think important too, is it will ask for the stage. So it will update the stage and follow-up boss, which then if you can see the domino will then put it into a correct smart list for her to then follow up proficiently with her clients in the smart list. And I will also add, Cherie's a great example to pull up of an agent who's That's very right. detailed. <laughs> Is that what you chose, Cherie? Um, Cherie's great with her details. I will emphasize not all agents are the best with this. And, you know, it's funny because even this morning, and again, I'm, I'm back in production, I think extremely high level, I have to add, but no excuses. I, um, I just had to bring on an assistant to help me out more, but I, it, it's hard for me sometimes to get to some of this information because like I was telling Jen, like my first is to go back and I've got to write an offer. I've got to, you know, like get to the next step. That should be agent brain, not, hey, I need to get back and get this disposition form. However, it is important for us to be able to track and follow our metrics for me too, right? So that's why we have a team behind us. So that's why Jen has a smart list that she'll ping people or you have um, a VA who is going, through, Claire's going through this now and she's reaching out, right? And making sure, because we have tags that are set up if these forms go out and they're not finished, then there's tags that interface has created for us to be able to have smart lists. So again, this is kind of a rabbit hole of where we're going with it. But again, it's a build process and we saw something that wasn't working. We saw a pain point, so we built around it. And so then the goal is Jen and Claire go through these smart lists to make sure that all of this is cleared and that they get the dispositions in that we have and we keep our database as clean as we can. And it also then creates efficiency for conversion, right? So if, if, if clients just get lost in the shuffle in your database, you're gonna lose conversion on those clients. So it really is a very important part of making sure that this stays clean for efficiency. Um, and then Jan, if you wanna just maybe point out a couple other of the things we've added in here. Yeah. The, the reason is we've had so many systems over time We've decided we don't want too many things for our agents. They're going to be in their CRM. That's where they need to be. Um, we, we have CSU. Do agents go in and look at their numbers in there? Not very often. Some do. Not very often. But we do goal tracking in CSU, and we have a place for them to go to do that. And there's a time and a place for it. Um, we have a few other places for them to look for material. But really, follow-up boss is where they should be. We shouldn't be steering them anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So we've added, you know, a bunch, a, a few of our other forms where we're very high form driven company. Um, this one, for example, I don't know if you want to pull that one up or, or oh, whatever yeah. you'd like to show in there or whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. So for example, when an agent has a home that they just took a listing on, there's a form in here that they click that then goes over, they fill out this form. This form then goes over to our listing manager, Lauren, and then it notifies Lauren. It signifies a Slack message on the on Slack for the agents to all celebrate together. And, um, and then it lets Lauren know, hey, here's a listing that we need you to start processing. So we wanna make it so that most of our forms 
for their their life live in this in follow up boss in these custom fields for them to go reference. Um, go back over to the custom fields. We also have um, tags. So, you know, there's a link if they need to understand what some of the tags are, they can see what that looks like there. We have a follow up boss daily checklist if they need to just be reminded. Again, I doubt that the agents are really going in and looking at this, but you are going to get so many different kinds of agents on the team. Some will use it and some will not, right? But we want to be able to provide that. And then on top of it all, um, uh, Jen does a monthly database meeting with our agents. So it, I don't know if you want to speak on that real fast, but just to really make sure that, you know, we have an opportunity to stay clean in person so with them. We do um, like a group meeting, um, about four to five agents in a group. And we go over best practices, um, things that I'm seeing patterns of in follow-up boss, things that I feel like we need training on and that the agents um, might need to be updated on, things that they have maybe forgotten about. And um, also new features, if, if we add a new form or if follow-up boss has an incredible update um, that we wanna make sure that they're aware of. Um, things like that get shared during that time. Yeah, so we do that once a month. And also at our weekly team meetings, there's always a spot for Jen to have her database updates. So I would say there's rarely ever a, a weekly Thursday meeting that you're not standing mm -hmm. up and reminding them of something or showing them something. Yeah. So our database is, you know, it's, it's a very, very important part of our company. It is our company. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, okay. I let's show what interface is here. And um, basically, and we can maybe click on, you know, uh, some links and follow up us to show them our forms once we get there. But um, so if you can go back to the slide, Brenna, I'm just going to show this one here and then we'll, we'll go into, okay. So basically there's a company it's um, and I'll put it in the chat of what it is here. If any of you guys are watching this later or are live, not online I'm, and you need the information, just reach out to me and let me know. But interface is a company who is able to basically fill in the gaps. So how do we get this information that we're putting in here over to our other systems to be able to, to analyze this information, to be able to process. And we also do our um, transaction management in CSU for our TCs. This is just the way we have it set up, right? And so they're gonna need these clients to be moved over. How do we avoid extra data input? And so basically these forms take it over into CSU. At the same time, it also takes the data and it analyzes, okay, so are these agents making the phone calls? Are they um, setting appointments? Are they doing all the things that they need to do? And I know that Follow-Up Boss does this too, right? So Beth, you may be just using Follow-Up Boss, which is totally fine and effective as well. Um, but because we have transaction management in CSU and we put our goals in for the agents into CSU, we needed something to take that information and move it over. So um, it, originally, and still, we use Interface for that exchange process. Interface is now working on, and they have out an automation builder. So there's, there's things in follow-up boss that you can't necessarily set up with action plans. And so Interface has made it so that you can basically just move and plug in and drop. And I will transparently say, I am not on those meetings anymore to the capacity where Jen and Keely um, are on those, but they're, they're working. If there is a something that is a pain point for us, then they'll work on filling that gap for us. Right? Correct me if I'm wrong, Jen, because <laughs> that's not where I live so much anymore. <laughs> yes, that is and so they, uh, they have a solution okay. for. They have some kind of solution for any problem that we can come up with. Typically, <laughs> yes, yes, it's, it's you know whatever it is, they'll they will create it. And so um, what I want to show you is 
let's go on if you can pull up the uh, follow bus and let's just show one of our forms. Um, maybe let's show our pending form. So we worked with interface for quite a while on getting these forms set up. I'd say, I, I believe at the, I believe right now it's us and Kyle Whistle has probably the, the most robust of these forms. They can be very generic, um, which is fine for most people. For us, we needed more information. But basically, this is a pending form. So when our agents get a contract, um, we need to, when you have a large team too, you remember you have to have things in place for, or just larger team or just more bodies in general to make sure that they're beating the same drum. drum. We needed something that everybody just followed the same thing. And so what we create is forms. And so, um, and eventually I'm sure AI will, will do even more and more in all these things, but this is where we are right now, right? So the agent goes in, they, we've created this form, they click through this information, we've revised these forms to make them shorter and shorter as we go. And so they, they, up, they put in the documents, they put in the contracts, um, they upload as much information as they can. You can see most of this is required. They'll go to the next page once all this is put in, it'll ask them to upload. What that does, then it shoots all the information over to CSU. It shoots all the information over to our TCs. It shoots a um, Slack message out that says, congratulations, you know, so-and-so is open. The agents can cheer everybody on and celebrate. And one form efficiently pushes all that information over. It changes the stage in uh, follow boss. Jen, correct me on anything else, changes the stage. Um, it, what else does it do? It does like a checklist of things by one form basically within follow up us and you probably know better than me <laughs> at this point but <laughs> it notifies um, all the people that need to be notified that um that we in have a nutshell a transaction <laughs> pending yes exactly <laughs> yes it does all the many things by yeah. that one form right and so um you know that is a valuable time save and it also keeps us clean to have interface to build this process for us to be able to push that information over. Um, I don't know if you have anything else to to add with that, but, you know, as far as interface and some of the automations, but I know that's one of our major ones, obviously. Yeah, I thought it would be cool to show this one too. Um, so we use um, Slack yes. as our team communication, and this was something that interface built for us that is a lot of fun. So we have these um, always be closing channels. And this is for our ISAs that are calling through the lead pond and setting up appointments with clients that are in the lead pond. Um, when they fill out the appointment form, they're going to click um, assign an agent later. And by doing that, what it does is it will automatically shoot the appointment over on to the always be closing channel that it's supposed to go to. So for example, if it's a Zillow lead that's in Riverside County, it'll put it on the Zillow Riverside County channel. And then what happens is it comes up looking like this and then agents get notified and they can say, oh, me, me, I wanna take this appointment. And then the ISA assigns it to the available agent that's available at that day and time for that client. That was a big plus for us too. Um, the other thing in, that they do, and so I'm just going to show this because this is their newest product here, is when you are, here, let me share my screen here. So this is um, interface here. This is their website. But you can see, again, when you, uh, when you work with them, you can basically drag and drop to build your forms, to set it up the way that you need your forms. You can also then take any kind of action plan that you'd like to create in Follow Boss that may, because Follow Boss only will let you go so far with how many action plans and things that you'd like to do. So they have a drop, drag and drop form builder and they have drag and drop automation options for you to be able to set these up. And so if you don't have capacity to do that, obviously they can work with you. You can speak with them and they can help you um, to be able to work on these as well. 
I know for us, we're, you guys are on with them, I think, weekly, right? Like, is it a weekly meeting or is it every other, Jen, that you guys are on with them? Sorry, yes, we do weekly. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Weekly. Yeah. Um, so, but these are important things to be able to make sure that you continue to streamline and make sure that your systems are running efficiently and smooth. Um, I don't know, Beth, do you, what, do you have anything else to add to that? And then I want to, no, cool. and then I want to show how we do this too. Said different ways of, yep. Setting. I get what you're doing now. I mean, we have open and close, I think, which is similar to interface where it's a little bit more on the TC side. I'm again, I'm not familiar with interface, but same concept, like having a way that agents can claim leads, all those things, right? Having a way to seamlessly move people between systems and the forms, all that's is uh, makes it easier when you have a lot of people. Like I always say, what you what you're doing, what I'm doing. I used to have three people that manage me, and now there's a three or four people that manage you know, 50 people, right? And 500 yeah. transactions versus like 50. It's very same number of people yeah. doing a lot of stuff because of these automations and tools that we have. Mm -hmm. That's how we can scale and, and get things efficiently created within our teams is by automations. Um, so, and, and just also, we did look at open to close. It's a, it's an amazing system. Um, it, it just in our capacity, we were like, should we spend the time to move over to open to close and we just found that we were better suited staying put and selling homes. <laughs> so however you swing it, that's a great system too, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so anyways, what, what we wanted to show you guys also for dessert, cause this is kind of a fun, this is a fun, I mean, I don't know if the agents are gonna say it's fun, but I actually feel like most of them are enjoying it. I do. I actually do. And and Beth, I'm not sure if you use anything like this. This is from within mm -hmm. Follow Up Boss. Do you do you follow the leaderboard? Do you guys use anything within the yeah, leaderboard? Yeah, we and then we send it out every week. And what we do is the thing that's great about the leaderboard is we have a newsletter that goes out every Monday to our agents. And then like you said, taking different um metrics so that's not always the same people like whether it's like who made the most dials, who had the most lead follow up, who's converting and then sending them out to the team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Good. Yeah. However you guys use this, but again, specifically to follow a boss, we wanted to, obviously we need to make sure that when the agents get um, clients, not only do they stay clean and tidy within the system, but are they actually doing the work, right? What is, what are they doing within their CRM? And so follow -up boss has a great way of tracking this by their leaderboards. And so agents will get points for actions that they do. So 500 points for appointments, um, they get, I, I can't remember, like a, a point or two for text message, whatever it is, right? Follow-up boss has this all dialed in. And the cool thing is with interface and the forms, the appointment form, they fill out the form, it goes into their uh, appointment set, they get 500 points. So what we do is um, we make it fun, like it sounds like you're doing, every Thursday, we'll post at our team meeting the points like like this we will have a board with all of the agents points. We're also a big team of transparency. So everybody's going to see who's killing it with the points, who's not necessarily killing it with the points. Maybe they're busy. I'm going to assume they're busy. <laughs> um, we do it the day before, basically that day that they have the last push of the day to get their points in. And our standard on the team is at least 3000 points a week, which we track. And we have, you know, spreadsheets where we keep track of all of this stuff and we celebrate them at the team meeting. We inspire them and push them at the team meeting to say, hey, you guys, if you're at 2000 points right now, go get go go get your points. 3000 points allows them to get opportunities for the following week. If they don't get their 3000 points, they're not getting turned on leads. Right. And so they have an expectation that we track every week based on their activities that we record in follow up boss to be able to earn points for the or earn leads for the next week. So we assume they're just busy um, if they can't take that. But that's just that's just become a standard. And I would say at first it was a little bit like, well what do we do? 
Jen, do you want to speak on that with us? <laughs> yeah, it was a little rocky um, getting it started and getting everybody to, you know, um, want to participate. But now it's become like a fun, friendly competition. And people are at the Thursday meeting talking about like, oh, I only have you know, everybody teased Jen on this particular week. Like, Jen, what's wrong with you? You only have 8,000 points. You usually have like oh, 40,000. Yeah, Jen's usually so, almost at 20,000. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it becomes like a fun kind of friendly competition between them where they all want to inspire each other to set appointments, have the conversations and get on the board. Yeah, so I mean, because you always want to make sure that you're, you know, keeping your culture, also giving accountability, showing the results. And again, we're a team of high transparency, so we're not going to shy away from showing where everybody's at. And um, we also are a team, and I know you are too, Beth, of we have our pod leaders, and I, I know you kind of have that set up. So the pod leaders are also watching over whoever's in their pods to make sure, you know, hey, if they're seeing their numbers are a little low, it, it allows them to reach out and say, Hey, what you, what you been up to? What can I do to help? So. I next. think we're going to go to the end. Like as far as just next time, we'll wrap it up. Maybe there's an end. Well, that was awesome. And I, if there's questions, I'm sure Jen or Siri are able to reach out and right. Or is, I don't I, I, on Instagram or I can't remember what do we have. Team Cookbook. Find yeah, you. obviously, if you guys need any, um, you know, any help out there, or if you have any questions, um, I know. I know looking at these kind of things can be exciting, but also very overwhelming at the same time. Like, where do I even begin? And so, you know, obviously we can't help to build from scratch, whatever your CRM is. However, if you have some questions, you know, Beth, I know you have a very solid CRM and I know today was very based on ours, but you have a system that works yeah. that you've been using for a long time too. And so we're we're both here to be able to help you guys in you know the best capacity that we can to be able to answer us about what should I do or should I begin. So you could just talk about the CRM every week for like a whole year. It's like such a robust. Yeah, I mean, week, I, right? here's the thing. I know this isn't super exciting. <laughs> it is exciting. It depends on where you are. It's exciting, and maybe someone watches it and just sees like, oh my gosh. I mean. If if I had known 10 years ago, five years ago, what the end even could look like or might look like, it makes you at least think a little bit more when you're even setting it up in the beginning, right? I mean, it makes you realize like, oh, wow, this can become like a whole thing, yeah. right? Save you some steps. That's what we're here for is to help save you some steps. But yeah, here's our information. If you guys need to reach out um, real, we you can find us in Workplace, send us a message. There's our Instagrams. And what are we going over next month? Beth, I know you're going to be leading that one a little more. I don't even remember. Oh, yeah. I'm going to surprise you guys. That's I okay. Surprise. Agent events, but don't hold me to that. So, okay. I, I saw age of events, <laughs> but also stay tuned. Things do change. So we stay don't. tuned. <laughs> kidding, so. Yeah, I actually just stay tuned because I actually have um, our, a session for us with events too. So.